E.T. the Extraterrestrial is uh, officially getting a 40th anniversary IMAX re-release on August 12th this year. And uh, as of uh, the time that I am recording this, it is 40 years to the day since uh, the film was released in theaters. And this wound up be E.T. wound up becoming a, such a cultural phenomenon when it came out. It was directed by Steven Spielberg, who at the time was on an absolute hot streak. In 1975, he did a, another film that's actually going to get a re-release this year, too, called Jaws. Then, uh, two years later, he did Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And a year before uh, E.T. Uh, was released, he uh, did another film called uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. All of those films were uh, nominated for Best Picture. And eventually E.T. would also be nominated for Best Picture. But it would uh, unfortunately lose to uh, the film Gandhi which actually shocked that that film's uh, director, Richard Attenborough, who uh, everyone who's a Jurassic Park fan would know, uh, who, uh, knows would eventually uh, go on to uh, star in uh, another Spielberg film called Jurassic Park. And speaking of Jurassic Park, I know there's a new movie out uh, this week, a new installment out this weekend. I have not heard the best the best uh, word about that. I've heard it's actually, that it actually fails to stick the landing, even though I'm probably still going to see it. It's just going to be a while before I can see it. Because, uh, so I'm just really busy over the next few days, and I'm just not going to be able to get, I, I did uh, look at the show times uh, for yesterday, and I was busy last night, I, I, uh, already, uh, had a ticket to, uh, a baseball game at, that was at 7.20, the first screenings of a Jurassic uh, World uh, Dominion were scheduled for 4 o'clock, which would have meant more like 4.20, and it's a two-and-a-half-hour movie, so I would have had about 20 minutes to get to my parking spot, then to the stadium before the game started. So... Uh, it's, it's, tickets to baseball games are non-refundable. I and I had already uh, purchased my ticket to the game by uh, the time the reviews, excuse me, show tickets were actually put on sale. And I just, I just wasn't going to have the time to do it. I am going to, I am, uh, right now going to fit it in as part of a double feature on, uh, Thursday where I, I will, uh, definitely be able to get out a review for that on that day, which is also going to be the day where I'll be getting out my review for Lightyear, I'm super excited about that movie. I am so excited. And I'm just as excited to actually be able to see E.T., the extraterrestrial, on the big screen, which I have never done. I, I know that it was re-released for its uh, 20th anniversary back in 2002, and... I uh, was not able to go uh, to go to the 
go see uh, the film back then. Is well, I was only about 13, so I couldn't drive myself or anything. But anyway, I'm so excited that it's coming back out to this year in theaters, even though the closest theater to where I live that has IMAX branding is actually a pretty crappy AMC. It's at, it's, it's one of those AM, it's not one of the ones that ended up getting those major renovations that wound up putting uh, the chain at five billion dollars in debt. But uh, if I don't want to go to that one, luckily I could drive just a little bit further and uh, go to another AMC that has a screen that has the IMAX branding on it. Hopefully, I'm hoping those two theaters will actually be screen be screening uh, E.T. because I am just super excited about this. Anyway, the film uh, is a story of a, an alien who accidentally gets uh, stranded on Earth and uh, he's uh, found and befriended by uh, a boy named Elliot who's his parents are going through a divorce. It's been hard on uh, Elliot and his uh, siblings, uh, Michael and uh, Gertie. Because what well, this that part of the story was act is actually, uh, I believe, a reflection of part of spiel is. Uh, an element from part of Spielberg's uh, real life when he was a kid because his parents wound up getting divorced. And uh, the Elliot, Michael, and Gertie decide to try to keep E.T. a secret, but when E.T. starts to fall ill, the U.S. government finds out where E.T. is and steps in. And then uh, they, and uh, it's when E.T. is starting to fall ill where they start to realize that he has to, that E.T. has to phone home and say, E.T. phone home. And uh, the, the Elliot, Michael, and Gertie have to do what's best for E.T., even if that means saying goodbye, and my gosh, this is such a beautiful movie. I remember uh, years ago uh, going to Blockbuster and renting the 20th anniversary uh, DVD uh, box set. I feel old now, now now that I said that name, Blockbuster. And... Uh, I was what for like a week straight. I was watching ET on repeat. My uh, parents and my sister were like, "Aren't you tired of this yet?" And I was like, "No," because ET is such a gorgeous story. That part is so gorgeous. Part of me is wonders how could this film have not won best picture it is so beautiful i was as i cry like every time i watch this movie when we get to the end and we hear uh, that amazing score uh, by john williams Yeah. Yeah. The, I am totally not. I'm just totally not surprised that this became a phenomenon. I mean, ET uh, appeared in progressive commercials. There was that wonderful, wonderful uh, five minute. Uh, 
short film uh, just a couple of years ago that Xfinity, who are, are uh, under the same ownership as uh, Universal Studios, the distributor of the film, did with a, with a, the Henry Thomas returning as Elliot. <laughs> it... There's also, of course, there's of course the video game of the same name, which is considered the, as one of the worst video games of all time. I mean, so bad that even the the YouTuber uh, Angry Video Game Nerd himself, James Wolf, made an entire movie about him trying to about him. Grabbing a getting a copy of the game so he could review it, and uh, yeah, of course, everybody who's a Spielberg fan knows where his uh, studio, Amblin Entertainment, got their logo. I mean, you see a recreation of the logo on my shirt right here. That is just how iconic this film has become over the years. And there's also the John Williams score. It is so amazing. I am so happy that when it, the film came out on 4K that they included it in the packaging. It's, my gosh. It is such a... Williams made such an amazing score, as he always does. And the act, also the acting. The main actors for the film, uh, Henry Thomas, Robert McNaughton, and Drew Barrymore, they were still at an amateur level uh, with their experience with their experience before E.T. But yet. Spielberg does such a great job at directing them. You, you, uh, uh, can't even call them amateurs uh, with this performance. With their performance uh, in this film, there's nothing amateurish about their perform about any of the performances in this film. None. Because it's so well directed by Spielberg, it's everything that uh, everything uh, that was done to make this movie. It's just so well done. I can't help. I can't help but give E.T. the hardest rating that I could give a film. And I know that with some of the reviews that I've been doing as of late, I've been given this rating quite often. But those are all films that I feel have deserved that rating. My Neighbor Totoro deserves an A+. Ponyo, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, they all deserve it. And so does E.T., the extraterrestrial. My gosh. If you have a chance to actually see this when it comes out in theaters again on August 12th, go see it. I highly recommend you go see it.